Hey everyone, welcome to a very special edition of Tunnel Vision. I'm your host, Ryan Abraham. I'm joined uh, remotely by Ricky Irvins. He's a Rose Bowl MVP, four-year letterman at USC in the late 80s. Uh, when I was a freshman at USC, he was the tailback of record uh, in 1989. Uh, thanks, Ricky, for coming on the show. How you doing, man? man I'm doing great, man. I love, I love when you bring that up, 89. That was one of the best years ever. That was a Before crazy, I. yeah, my freshman year, I just, we were talking off air, like, I just moved out to California, I didn't know much about USC football, and uh, you had, what did you have, 269 rushing attempts that year, like, you were third on the depth chart, uh, it, you know, almost 1,400 <laughs> yards, 10 touchdowns, you caught 39 balls, like, for a guy that was third on the depth chart in fall camp, that's a, that's a lot of production. Well, that's just working hard, though, man, you know, uh, I, it's funny because <clears throat> during our, my sophomore year, uh, during this time around April, you got spring ball. And they also come out with the schedule of the next year, that year coming up, right? And the team they had <laughs> uh, right behind, it was Illinois, then Utah State. Everybody was all excited about Illinois because we get a chance to play Jeff George. But I was focused on Utah State because that's a stat game. And I'm sitting there going like, man, whoever starts, because you know, I don't, you wasn't here in 80 in 88. So in 88, we did running back by committee. It was Lockwood, myself, Aaron Emanuel. Yeah. Just rotating. Didn't like that, you know, because you know, you want to be man. Nobody liked that. But once I saw that Utah State in the schedule, <laughs> <laughs> I said, man, whoever starts in this game, I told the running backs, everybody that was there looking at the schedule, they're gonna be the man the whole year. I promise you that. Went home and called my, my, my trainer, Tate, man. Schedule came out. We got Utah State, the second game. I said, I don't care what you do to me. I need to be the starter by that second game. Yeah. During, and so that whole summer, he came and got me and trained me twice a day. And the funny thing about it, he went to UCLA. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I know, training me. Yeah, that was a Jeff George game was my first USC game. It was 14-13. Uh, I felt like Larry Smith just oh. didn't let a, you guys air it out at all. And – uh Jeff George comes back, scores two touchdowns late, and and and, and then winning the game. USC. I know, El frustrated. Oh my God, yeah, that was a heartbreaker, man. But yeah, that that was the year that got everything started, man. Yeah, I mean, you had a huge year. You were, end up going to your third straight Rose Bowl from mm -hmm. you know mere high school in Pasadena. Like you're a local kid. I love the story that after the Rose Bowl, you get you again the game winning touchdown over 100 yards, beat Michigan yep. 17 10, and, and you home. walk home. <laughs> <laughs> with my family. Yeah, man, because it was I, I'm right there. I mean, I literally live right around pretty much taking me. If I jog, it'd probably take me about maybe three minutes, three to four minutes to get to the Rose Bowl. Wow. And uh, we and, always ran at the Rose Bowl. Yeah. And then I mean you were parking cars there. And then you go <laughs> yeah, to playing it three years in a row. Like I, I mean, that's just a crazy there's so much history with the Rose Bowl, but the fact that you're like parking cars in like 87 and then you're playing at like 88, 89, 90, like I, I don't know if no one's done well, that before. Let me take you back a little bit more. You know, we have a thing called a turkey tussle in Cal in Pasadena. That's when the two rival teams play each other. Pasadena plays John Muir in the Rose Bowl. And so when I was, you know, 13, you you look forward to playing in that game because it's huge. And so once you get in there now, you you think about UCLA, the USC is in the Rose Bowl in the locker room. You're like, look at all this tape. Look at this USC tape or US UCLA tape. We get all excited because we're in there playing. But I was just used to playing in that game because of me being in there with Pasadena High School, PHS. So being in the game with, when I played Michigan State, the first game, then Michigan, Michigan, it was just natural for me. The... Uh... The game itself, I mean, it's crazy. We can talk about your your career at USC a little bit, but I want to go back for the recruiting process. Like recruiting is a big part, like what we do at uscfootball.com. It's a big part of it. Things have changed. Name, image, and likeness stuff. I mean, it's, you know, we have like free agency of college football. Like how hey, different. Can I stop you real quick? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you probably get this all the time, but you look exactly like Pete Curl. <laughs> oh, really? I don't think I've got that one. <laughs> I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you going like, Dude, this is Pete Curl. What the hell? <laughs> you don't get I that? A, I need a broken figure. I don't think I've got that one before. I get like what? Seinfeld and uh, I've no, got, right, as of right now, you look just like Pete I, Curl. I got a lot more salt and pepper now. You know, we're getting older <laughs> here. Uh, wow. Yeah, that's funny. You get, like, get out there. Always compete, everybody. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but how different is the recruiting process like? Uh, you know, then to now, like, I mean, you're, you're, we'll talk about like what you're doing now too, but like, it's, it's gotta be so different. 
It's oh, it's man. For the simple fact that they get to transfer to another school if they got any, if they can't beat somebody out. That is crazy to me. And you get so many transfers. Like, okay, I'm second train, I'm second string, so I'm gonna I'm a transfer to the school. All right, I didn't make this one, then I'm gonna transfer to the school. And you keep doing that. It's like, how is that possible, man? And then of course, recruiting, people get recruited now by just doing seven on seven. I haven't ever seen that. That's crazy. Never heard of that. You yeah, play like, seven on seven. It's like the underwear. You can get football. a scholarship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, uh, based on what you do on seven on seven. I'm like, how is that possible? Yeah. But that's that's the you know the era they were living now. And now name, image, and likeness. I mean, do you feel like yeah. being in LA, like uh, you know, could you have made a bunch of money when you were in I was born too early, bro. When I yeah, I was born too early. <laughs> Because now everything's legal, pretty much. Yeah. You get money from the lo- it's legal now, you know. Yeah. So, but hey, you know, I'm, I'm sure the guys in the '70s going like, man, I wish it was in the, there with the '80s guys. Oh, they getting all this, you know. It's it to me, it's the way things are supposed to go. Yeah. It was going to happen eventually because you know what happened with Ed uh, Ed O'Bannon. Oh yeah. Uh, so he started the whole thing, pretty much. The, uh, that 1989 team, um, I mean, you had the huge year, obviously, like you said, the Utah State, kind of the stat builder game. You had eight consecutive 100-yard rushing mm-hmm. games, which was a record at USC until Reggie Bush broke it, mm-hmm. you know, whatever, a couple of decades later. Yeah. Um, but there was a lot, you know, you had Junior Sale on that team. You had Mark Carrier, yeah. Todd Morenovich. I'm still friends with, you know, I got to speak at a, an event with Morenovich recently. I've sp- with yeah. Shane Foley. I've known him for a long time. Shane, uh, yeah, I mean, he lives I mean, in Pasadena. <laughs> yeah, what was that like? Like the whole Todd Morenovich thing, where he comes in as the you know cover of Sports Illustrated as a freshman. Apparently, never ate a cheeseburger, but he was actually I know. a drug. Oh, Big Mac. I was like, he, he was like, man, please. Of course he did. <laughs> but that was the thing on him because everybody was asking that question too. Like, hey man, you ever had a Big Mac? <laughs> yeah, you know. I was, someone just put that out there, but uh, you know that year of '89. But I don't know if you remember. We played the uh, key factor of that year was when we played Washington State in Washington. And they were number, they were in the top 10, at least top 12 at that time as well. And they were balling. They had Steve Bazaar as their running back. He was uh, vying for the, uh, the Russian title as well. And they were, you know, they was giving us a shot. They was actually whooping our tail. And they had us... 10, we had 10, they had 17 in the fourth quarter. And Ty, that's why I love this, this Ty, Ty Marinovich, man. This guy, this boy is a gamer. He's a baller. Oh, my God. We in, we in there on, damn near on our, what, f- six, seven, eight-yard line? Fourth quarter, two minutes left. No timeout. <laughs> and we draw, drive the ball all the way down. And score, then do a uh, two points and win the game. But the look in Ty's eyes when he was calling the huddle, I was like, "Oh, it's, it's game. <laughs> we got this." There was no panic. Everybody was just like, "Just we were hungry. We, just, we got this. We made about three, fourth and fourteen conversion. <laughs> Come on, man, <laughs> we winning this game. <laughs> if that happens." Yeah, and we won 18 17. Oh, that was the great. That to me got everything rolling that year. Yeah, that's how you get to the Rose Bowl. That's crazy. Yeah. Yes. Um, you go on to the NFL career, five years, uh, four with the Redskins, which you're living in, uh, you know, Northern Virginia now. Um, mm-hmm. One with the 49ers, Super Bowl. Uh, the 1992 was the Super Bowl 26 yep. or tw- 26. 26. 26. Uh, you guys beat the. Buffalo Bills, one of the greatest Redskins teams around. And you were the leading rusher in the Super Bowl. I mean, that's got to be a crazy experience. You know, I didn't even know I was at the time either so, until people start pointing it out. But, uh, yeah, it was fun, man. And the weird thing about our Super Bowl back then compared to now is that they have pretty much two weeks of a festivities just going on, just a party of just really because, you know, social media is involved with it now. You got that first week off, and then that second week, it's going to be somewhere warm, so you're going to have a great time. You're going to get a chance to go out. We had ours in Minnesota, where the snow was piled up to like 10 feet, literally. 
like, you know, places you see like, wow, we can't go in there. But it was cold. So you ain't trying to go outside. So you stayed in a hotel. We went to Prince's place maybe once. But for the most part, you are staying inside the hotel because you can't go nowhere. But, uh, and then once we got to the field, it felt like a normal game. Because that year in, in 91, we, we went 11-0 and before we lost our first game. So every game felt like just a regular game. So even in that Super Bowl, it's like, oh, this just, it didn't feel like a Super Bowl to me. Yeah. It just felt like another game that we just played. Um, we had a nice career in the NFL. You retire at age 27. What was the, you yeah. just didn't love football anymore? What was the? Uh, yeah, You know what? It got to that point where I just saw so much political stuff. When I'm over with the 49ers and I go over there and I know I should be playing and I'm not. I'm like, okay, this, I didn't, came in here, uh, got the, absorb the offense. You know, I'm better than these cats. So why I'm not playing, <laughs> you know, I mean, a lot of guys got hurt. I still didn't play yeah. <laughs> at some time. I'm talking about these guys are hurt. How come I, I had to ask the coach? I don't know what they're doing. Yeah. So it was like, okay. And then I went to the Raiders, went over there for a while. And it was like, okay. My love is destroyed. So I loved the game, but I wasn't in love with it. Yeah. So I said, I need to be doing something. And then I know one time I got hit in the head uh, going to the sideline. I think it was playing Tampa Bay. And my body kind of went numb. Eh. That kind of woke me up the first time. Yeah. You're you like, know, ah. I'm like, okay. Yeah. But that was still in the back of my head. Yeah. Um, and so. Well, now going forward, I mean, you you like the Northern Virginia area. You stay, you stay out mm -hmm. there on the East Coast. Um, you know, you get married to the woman that you met during fall camp. Is that right? Or is that like, I, I got married to the, to the girl who I always loved. She actually, <laughs> we have history, but we don't even know that we know it now, but we didn't know it back then. She's from Pasadena. Okay. She went to Elliott middle school. I went to Elliott middle school. She went, of course she went to John. When I was, when she was at John Muir, I was a freshman Okay. at John Muir. I knew her her best friends because her best friends were like cheerleaders, song girls, and stuff like that. I, she wasn't around. Never seen her before. Until I stepped foot in Floor Tower. As soon as I opened Floor Tower, <laughs> I said, oh my God, is this college? <laughs> because she was so beautiful. She was one of the clerks at the, at the uh, front desk. So I walk over to her. I say, hey, uh, Ricky Irving checking in. Oh, no, I said, Irvin, it was Ricky Irvin checking in. She said, oh, you're the guy from Pasadena. I'm from Pasadena. And I went to mayor too. I was like, thank you, Lord. She said, <laughs> <laughs> and I, and she said, I commute. So anytime you need a ride home, I can get right home. I said, I'm going to need a ride home every day. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I had to, I, I knew I couldn't date her because she was old, older. And, and I had a girlfriend at the time. So I had to just be her best friend. Yeah. And I became her best friend, you know, for which. But sophomore, freshman, sophomore, junior, then we end up getting together our senior year. Wow. Okay. And married yeah. to this day. Yeah. And later, so you're living out on the East Coast. Now, that, the one thing I looked up, and you told me this beforehand, our, we have a mutual friend, Chris Hale, you know, played at USC. I mm -hmm. didn't know he's doing this, but you are still a uniform inspector for the NFL. Like, you are literally checking to see if dudes' jerseys the, are tucked in. I'm the cops. I'm the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> how, how has that we worked? I didn't even know existed. Them. Yeah, we slap fires on like bam. If your uniform is is not right, it's not in compliance with the rule, then you get fined. It's that simple. We write it up and send it in. When they would get that slip, and they gotta pay it. Are, are you and, like you know the funny thing about it? I was back, they started this probably, I want to say 93, 94. And I didn't even know. But I was getting money taken out of my check because of uniform infractions. I'm going, what, what's this uniform? What's this 1500? And so the guy who I actually joined about, I started this in 2014. Uh, name was Tony McGee. He played for New England. He played for maybe the Steelers and for the Redskins, right? So he was the guy writing up all these uniforms. So he'll go to you. He would say to you, 32, 32, pull your socks up. I'm like, for what? Now, we didn't have presentations. The way we have it done now, every, every team has two alumni being a uniform inspector, one for the visitors, one for the home team. But every year in, in August, we have a presentation to go over how your uniform is supposed to look. 
So you would know what you what you cannot do. Okay. Because the fine ain't gonna just it's not gonna just come. You gonna know better. You gonna know why you got that fine first of all. Okay. So we do the presentation, and and they would know. But back in my day, we didn't have no presentation. All I would get, hey, thirty two. You got too much white in your socks. I'm like, what are you talking about? Next day, you know, I get I get my check uniform. I'm like, and he probably told me about the third or fourth game. You know you're getting fined for your socks. I said, oh, that's you finding me. Let me know where I got to be, and I and I will keep it there. I'm tired of having that money coming out of my check. But these guys today, no, 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 they don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like writing parking tickets to everybody. That's oh, these. Oh, listen, there are some times where I almost just put everybody on the list because I know who's going to be on it. And it's the same people. It's every every home game at at with the skins. It's the same people. Nice. Um, well, I know you got to go here in a minute, but just real quick, you're also doing your uniform police for the NFL, but you're training athletes. You're doing real estate out there in Northern Virginia. Yeah. You're training athletes too. Yeah. I, I've, I've been training uh, athletes for not just athletes, but I have my, I have a fitness, I have a little private little fitness company that trains people like yourself, you know, people who's trying to get in shape. Then I also have, you know, a running back clinic that I do. Uh, I train for speed. I teach people how to run. Because um, I ran track at Mirror and at USC, and I just love to teach people how to run and see the joy that comes from their face when they, just like Ricky Morgan, when he goes to USC, I've been training Ricky since he was 13. And uh, to see him go there and flourish the way he did, man, and uh, it just makes a, a brother proud. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very cool. Uh, well, how can people, I know you, you're not on a Twitter, right? No, uh, no, nah, nah, I don't advertise my business because, again, here I, don't, I take select few. Okay. Yeah, it's like uh, because this is kind of private, so I don't advertise. Only way, you, just like what I said to Chris when, when when the young lady called me, I said, um, "How did you uh get my information? Because you have to have known somebody that know me to get yeah. you that." Well, Chris Hill, I said, well, "Say no more. <laughs> Say no more." <laughs> nice. I said because you just can't. I'm not advertising, and I'm not going. I haven't said anything out. Okay. Do you do stuff yeah, on Instagram? Yeah. Do you want people to follow you there or anything? Or uh, I don't do that either. Okay. <laughs> I just but you know what? I might open it up a little bit. Um, you, I just, I never needed it. You yeah. Know? Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, Ricky, I really appreciate it. It's so fun to be able to talk to you. Like, the, you know, when I was in the crowd of the Coliseum as a freshman at USC, to, you were the guy I was watching run. So, hey, very, uh, hey uh, <laughs> anytime you want to do this again, you just let me know. Now right. you got my number direct. All right. And I'm, I'm glad we were able to connect because yesterday I forgot I had a dentist appointment. I'm going like, oh, man, I can't do this now. Yeah, we were supposed to do this. Yesterday. This is a Wednesday. We're supposed to do it on Tuesday. And he's like, oh, yeah, oh I'm yeah, at a yeah. dentist appointment. I'm like, oh, I guess we're not going to do Like, I guess we could have got you like filming in the dentist chair or something. <laughs> that would have been a little tough. Yeah. And, awesome. uh, yeah, that would have been funny. But yeah, man, I really appreciate it, man. And I love getting a chance to talk about, you know, my school and what's going on because I am so happy now that they got a coach that really knows what he's doing, that people respect, that players will respect. Yeah. You see, they try to ask me questions about um, Drake London um, when he was getting drafted because the skins were going drafted. They was thinking about drafting him. Oh, so okay. I'm, getting, I'm getting calls and interviews like this. People who were thinking about like, hey, so what do you like? I said, listen, I, I really can't give you much information because I really didn't watch USC because when they doing, when they are, I record every single game. If they win that, that day, I go back and watch the game. <laughs> but if they lose, I delete it. So I don't know what's going on. I don't because I'm tired of watching bad football. Yeah. You know, I mean, when during your during your time you was there, Pete Curl, you guys had like nine straight years. You know what I mean? Well, you can just watch the game and just you know what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So you're excited about Lincoln Riley. I mean, they got, you know, they get Travis Dye. They got Austin Jones. I love Darwin Barlow. Like, they look like they're going to be able to run the football. That's got to make you happy. Look, you got people commit decommitting and coming to USC because of this, this coach. Now, is the pressure on him? Probably so. Because now he got to produce. Because you just, this ain't no just a regular school. You at football university. You at, you know, just like Alabama. We are, we, just, we are the same for football. So now you got to bring your skills and try to bring it back up to where Pete Carroll had it, yeah. if not better. 
All right. Well, I know you got to go, Ricky. It was great to talk to you. I'd love to talk to you again more about oh, the you current can't. team. Just, and, just uh, let me know, man. Like I said, during the season, if you, if you want to, when the season starts, just let me know. After I'm a here. win, because those are the games you'll watch. You know? <laughs> there you go. Okay. I can't talk about a bad game. I, I really can't, because I, I don't know. I don't. I haven't seen it. 